Greetings, student. My name is Ayram Kajwa. I'm a lecturer at the Tanzanian Vet College at the campus of Mlomati. I'm teaching information technology and computer science, a subject systems analysis and designs level four. So we are going to take a lesson from this topic, which says that is observation of people and business processes. I've derived this from the topic of information gathering. If you've been following the lessons, it was one of the first lessons that I've delivered, which is gathering information. But today I'm bringing a different module, which is observation. So this is what we are going to look at today. So what is an observation? We've been using this word interchangeably, but Today I'm going to bring it as part of information gathering. What is an observation? An observation is to watch people doing their business processes and how they do them formally. There is a difference between observation and spying. When you are coming to spy, you just have to hide. They don't have to see you watching what they are doing, how they do it with your own intentions. But with observation, it's something that is formal something that you have planned, something that you have requested permission to do. For example, you need to write a letter to that specific company and request permission to do an observation. That is why we are saying it's one of the formal part of gathering a data. So now that's a definition of an observation. Why do we do observation? Remember, we are looking at data gathering. We have looked at a different one, which was an interview. But this one has to be specific. Why do you have to observe? Why do you have to come to a company and look how people work? That can be intimidating even to the company. But as a system analyst, you need to collect relevant information. You need to collect accurate information. You have to be sure of what you have because it has to do with changing the system of that business or improving the system of that business. So you cannot be sure that whatever that you obtain in an interview or another tool, is it really what they are saying? Remember, people can say what they think in order to look good, but when you come to observe, you are going to have a real life information. You are going to be part of the information now. So now we're looking at why do we have to observe? One, you need to take part take part of the system. Okay, I'm going to just make use of a banking company because we're all used to going to the bank now and so on. So, you know you've been in the bank, you've been using the banking services all these years, but now here you come as a system analyst. Whatever that you see outside is being a customer experiencing services. But now you want to find the inner details. What is it that they are doing behind those doors which we cannot see? So we are going to observe. Why do you observe? You need to take part of the system. Because as a system analyst, you need to improve the current system or you have to build a new system altogether. If you can check, I remember when I first opened my account, when you're withdrawing money, the ATM, which is standard bank, and make an example of that, you'll have to put your card, enter your PIN, enter the amount. Then, instead of the card coming out first, cash will roll out. As much as you are happy with the money, you leave the ATM and go, which cards were lost or left in the ATM. So, as a person or as a customer, you'll usually go back, I need a card. A system analyst was hired to check why people are losing cards. And they realize that because the first thing that comes out of the ATM is money. Once I have my money, I can go now. So they decided to change the system and say that no one is going to leave his or her money in the ATM. Let's bring the card first. 
So you are forced to take the card because it has to trigger your mind to come out. So that's how the system has improved. Someone has to go to the bank and sit and watch the process as it happens Why people are leaving cards on their ATMs. And that's how it has improved because a person decided to be part of the system. Now, we are going to check accuracy. Observation is one of the data gathering tool that you can do after you have done another one. So now I've went and do interviews, I have my information, I'm analyzing the information, but some of the things are puzzling me as an analyst. Is this how they do business? Okay, then I decide that I'm going to do observation and see if the data that I have is accurate. Another reason why we do observation is because of we look at the areas of improvement. The company trusts you as a system analyst that you are going to bring change with the new system. So now you are sitting there in the company, you are looking at how they do business and you are thinking, how can I improve this? So one of the analysts went to the bank and looked at people queuing and they said, no, the way we usually fight on the queues, they decided to make that machine that releases a ticket. So even if you take a ticket and you go to number one, if your ticket is number three, you'll be called as number three. So those are the areas of improvement that one of analysts that was hired to look at the way people are queuing and the way people are not being fair actually. So I have to go and look for areas of improvement. How can I change this? How can I fix this? Because as an analyst, you are bringing the solution. You are coming to change the way we are doing things currently and bring technology to the people. So you cannot say a programmer will do it. Every programmer, you know that, they program what a system analyst has analyzed and of course designed. Okay? So these are the reasons why we go straight to the business center and start to do observations. We are going to look at forms of observation. We are going to look at the forms So as you are going to first request permission, they will ask you, how are you going to do your observation? You cannot say, I'm just going to stand there and see you work. Some of us can be intimidated by just looking at a, by just looking at a person standing and watching us. You will sometimes ask yourself, is this an inspector? Am I being watched? Did I do mistakes? So people will start panicking in the environment. We have to look at the forms of observation that will properly suit that business center. So we are going to look at the work sampling, number one. So I want you to note very carefully on the forms of observations, because one of the things that you can be asked, what are the form of observation that you can use in this given scenario? So you must be careful to choose the right one that fits that specific scenario. Now we look at work sampling. We are coming to a college. As a business center, remember a college is a business center, you are coming to a college. When you reach there, you want to make an observation about students in the cafeteria. You cannot just go to the admin center and say, I just want to see how students buy food and so on. You need a right place, sample your space. I'm going straight to the cafeteria, not in the morning around six o'clock, not around three o'clock or during lessons. In order to check about how they interact with the cafeteria, you need to look at when is this process at its working part. Then you can go as if it's a cafeteria in a college, it means you'll go during lunchtime when the students are going in and out because you want to find the feeling of what is it that they are doing? Do they like the food? Do they prefer going outside? Because now you need to gather relevant information in order to change the system or build a new system. So now we also look at the second one, which is observation. Without talking. <laughs> this one is a little bit fun. We are going to be just a working robot in someone's company. Okay, you are not going to say anything because you have already requested information they have given you. This person is not going to communicate with anyone. You just get there. Since they know what you are going to do, you sit down with your notes, you start writing down. They know that you are supposed to be there. They have to continue working 
as much as possible because you are not going to intimidate them, you are not going to talk to them, they don't even have to talk to you like, are you okay, ma'am, or say, why are you watching me at length? You are not going to talk to them. And the manager will tell them that a specific person will come from this company, which is a system analyst, she or he is just here to watch what we are doing. You don't have to be intimidated. You don't have to talk to people. Hi, hey, how is it? How is it working? Do you like working in this environment as if you're going to provide a job? No. Just have to sit without talking. We have the last one, which I like the most. This one is observation by role play. I'm not saying that I like it because it's more important than the others. I'm saying when you say that observation gives you a feeling of what is happening, now you are going to take part with the people in the company. So with a role play, you tell the manager, how can I be part of what you are doing today? So this involves a little bit of training. For example, if it's about lecturing, the person will be given just a small lesson and they say, just have to present this to the students, and she want, or he or she wants to see how do the student react to lessons. So I want to be part of that. First, I'll present a lesson as a lecturer, then after that, you go down and sit as a student and see other people presenting lessons. You are doing a role play. So then you can communicate with people on this one. You can ask them, am I doing the right thing? Do you think this lecture is much productive or what? Because now you are a student, you are taking part. You are writing notes just like the others. But the only difference with you is that you are also taking notes of what is important. Remember to keep in mind, when you are doing observation or any data gathering tool that you are using to gather information, keep the purpose in mind. Why am I here? Why am I observing these people? Because as much as this one can be exciting, you can be carried away off. Now you are busy. If they say you are going to be a cashier, you are so serious about cashiering money and calculating and everything, you are forgetting that you are not here to work, just to role play so that you can observe what they are doing and get information. So these are the forms of observations. When you are given a scenario, you need to check which one is fit. Can I just take a work sampling? Can I use observation without talking, moving around and checking what they are doing? Or do I have to take part? This is determined but by the information that we, have, that we want to gather and also by the environment that you're going to observe. So after this one, you're going to look at the benefits and the disadvantages, the cons and pros. Okay, we well, know this for advantages and for disadvantages. I'm just going to simplify that. Advantages and disadvantages or pros and cons. And cons. So every data, ring, data gathering tool it has its own benefits and of course its own disadvantages. That is why we always say as an analyst choose the one that is suitable for that project and you'll know that you'll gather information as much as possible. What are advantages of observation? Number one you're going to get first-hand information You won't hear them saying that our, comp our environment is so nice, you're working very well, our manager is very nice. You are part of the company now. You'll know that, hey, this place is very cold, it's like a freezer. Why? Because you are there. You are going to get first-hand information. Number two, it will help you to understand. It helps with understanding. Bearing in mind the goal of collecting the information, we are going to understand business processes so that you'll know that, oh, I have to simplify this. I don't have to extend the system to this much. I just have to do this so that I must reduce the workload. Oh, this part is kind of negligent, so I have to do this. That's why it helps you to understand the processes that are there. So another part of this one, it gives accurate data. That's an advantage. Since now I'm looking at the manager working out, I'm looking at the manager resolving information, now I know that, okay, this is how they do it, it's accurate. Remember, I said observation can be done on top of other data gathering tools. So now as you're observing this person working out, you say, oh, this was true, which was said by the people, and now we are in the company. You might be, find that you are reading a policy document, 
And when you're interviewing someone or when you're gathering information in other ways, find that this was not so. The police does not say so. The people are not following policies. Why? Because whatever that you have now, someone is not telling you, but you're looking at it with your own eyes. So the information that we get is reliable. When you come to reliability of information as a system analyst, it means that it can be used to change or upgrade the system or build a new system. But since it's an advantage, there is a disadvantage of observation. So with observation, people can get intimidated. Here you come with your tech, with your formal thoughts and a diary in your hand and everyone is like, what is happening today? Even if they told them, they're like, is she really observing or someone is watching us doing mistakes? So when people are intimidated, they do things wrong. Because I'm being watched, I'm going to do things, actually I'm scared and nervous, whatever that I'm doing. Another thing with intimidation, it can cause people to present wrong information. If I know that I'm watched, you know that I can be very formal. I can just come into my class and start working whatever that I'm doing, teaching the students, recording marks. You won't even see me going to break because I'm being watched, which is my right. So whenever people are being watched, they do things differently. And this will bring wrong information into your hands because you'll think that everything is under normal. Actually, why do they have to change the system? Because everything is perfect. But the problem is that people are being watched. So another one, you may not experience is no normal load. What do you mean by this? As an analyst, you might request to do an observation, only to find that you are granted a date where things are normal. And when you go there, you will think that everything is working well. But comes month end, for example, in a bank, you will find that there is chaos. Everyone is working up and down. No one is having free times. But what we have recorded already, it says that everything is working well, there are no glitches, there are no problems. So you might experience that there is no normal load on that. So to, in order to find a normal load, you have to do more observations, more observations, and that is time consuming as a system analyst. So we are going to look at the last one, which is unusual problems. Yeah, this is a business process. People are working there. You know, once there are people, we are going to be happy there and there are going to have problems. Here you come, you're observing around, only to find that today you meet a manager and one of the employees are fighting and you're like, this is how the things are done in this company. And the more they have glitches, it has, it has nothing to do with your system, but when you come to implement the system, there is a time that we have to go to the manager, you go to the employee and you bring back, back together. Now, these people are fighting like serious and you experience that like, okay, how do I record this? Is it part of the policy? They are not following policies because as an analyst, you need to record if people are following policies, if people are not following policies because those are part of the report. Remember, whatever that you are doing is for the best of the business, not the person, not the manager, not the employee, but what's best for the business. Because today you might come in that I'm a cashier, you interview me or you observe me, we work together. Tomorrow when you come to implement the system, now you find that I'm the manager. And you're not going to say, why are you here? Why can't we interchange? No, you cannot ask those questions. Because during the time when you're busy designing your systems with your programmers, I got a promotion. Now you're saying, where is that angry manager when you come in to find that? Is that angry employee all of a sudden? So now things are going to change. You need to understand that whatever that you see, whether there are problems, you need to further ask. Remember, you are role playing or you are watching them. When you are writing your report, does this usually happen? And I said, no, she was angry today in the morning. So you have to scratch it out. They do follow policies. Whatever that they did, they can resolve it. It's not part of what I'm observing as part of the information that I have to take out today for the system design. So now we are going to look at conducting observation. Remember just looking at the goodness and the disadvantages of the observation. So when you are conducting an observation, it's good to plan what you're going to do. First of all, we have to look at the purpose. 
Why am I in this company? Am I here to watch their, what they are doing, whatever? Or am I here to gather information specifically to improve a system or to design a new system? Because observing to improve a system, just go for the process there and there. But when you're observing to build a new system, you need to go step by step. How does the system flow? Where do they start? Where do they go? So you need to check by the purposes and plan properly. When you connect, now you have to plan because now you know what is your purpose. You are coming to planning. So now, after planning, you need to check who am I going to observe first? What am I actually looking at? Because we're looking at a relevant information that we want to collect. Because we are not just going to the building moving up and down with escalators and so on. You need to be specific. Just stick to the purpose, okay? Okay, we look at, also why am I observing this? Okay, these are the keys. In planning, why am I observing this? Because who am I going to observe? I'm going to start with the manager because the manager has a database for the employees. This is the information that I need to know. How big is the database? As an analyst, which I believe you already know from level three, that as an analyst, you must have a knowledge of the hardware that they are using because we are bringing in the system. You have the right as you are observing that, no, manager, I think your computer is old. The system is not going to work because now we are looking at who? What are you observing? What does the manager do day to day in order to bring out the process? Why? You know, in many businesses, they are looking at the profit. Now you have to look at, is the system going to fit when I'm building it or when I'm changing it? Will it improve the results that they're looking at? That is why I'm observing this person. These are the things that I'm looking at. So we are also going to look at what type of observation. Let's just say the type. This brings us back to the forms of observation. Am I going to observe without talking and just look at the manager? Or do I have to role play? Or do I have to work simple? As I'm going to the office of the manager, I'm sampling the work and I'll need to look at what it's doing. I'm going to ask questions there and there if I don't understand. Checking documents in this table because when you request for the time to do observation, you also tell them, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm looking at. Can you please put the documents on the table? Can I please at least see the invoices? How do you print it out? Because system must be started from when you collect information, you analyze you build your system and of course there must be an output so these are the main things that you are going to do as you are conducting the observation lastly you need okay let's say you note you note and report as you're observing you'll be going on taking notes of what they are doing taking everything into consideration the purpose of why am I here now we come to the report after the observation, you don't go home and say, oh, what a day. At least get some space in that office and start noting everything that we have observed. I remember this is one of the questions that they ask, when do we have to write a report? Note it. I'm not saying it's part of, the, of this year's examination. I'm saying you have to note it. When do we write the report? Immediately after observation. The reason being, you don't want to forget what you've been watching all day. Already we have people that if there is a clarity, you can just go to them and ask them, what is it that was happening in this part as you're observing? That's part of the reporting. So that, it means that you report immediately. When you come back again to the report, you don't just say everything was fine, then I'm going. As I'm about to close this lesson, you go back to the manager. I've observed everything, this is what I find. This is the information I have. I'm ready to build your system. So that's it about observation. So if you have further information of what I've talked about, you can contact us on our website, our college website, which is www.etlanzenicollege.co.za. When you go to that website, you can also find us on our Facebook page or our Twitter. So send questions there, comments, or any clarity that you request. So we'll be able to interact with you. Yeah, my name is, I'm Kachua, like I said, stay at home, stay safe. Thank you.